Hello YouTube, welcome to another Season 6 Patch 6.12 guide. Today we're going to cover a recently reworked mid lane and top laner in Vladimir, the Crimson Reaper. The rivers will run red. Vladimir pretty much went from a never played champion to a almost always picked or banned champion pretty much overnight after the rework. He's a champion with high sustain, strong poke, and even scales off of AP and HP at the same time due to his passive. With his reworked Q and his reworked E, he's able to dish out a lot more damage and have much more sustain at the exact same time. His W isn't too different, it's still an amazing escape, which makes Vladimir rather hard to shut down. The main problem for the enemy team is since they can't shut him down that easily, he might make it to the late game where he is an insane late game AP carry. He's even got great wave clear to go along with that, so he's able to get those items quickly and carry the game. Now just like old Vladimir, he's rather weak early game. He's still the same in the fact that his Q is pretty crappy early on, but when you do get levels into it, the cooldown goes down, the damage goes up, and his sustain becomes much better. You pretty much just have to make it past the first few levels of the game, and then you'll be completely fine. His W, which is his escape tool, has a 26 second cooldown at level 1, and that's the level we have to leave it at. This is a pretty big problem because Vladimir is rather squishy early on, he doesn't really have too much to survive, so when he doesn't have his W available, he's extremely vulnerable. You just pretty much have to make sure you don't waste the ability, only use it when you actually have to, and you should be fine. 26 seconds isn't extremely long. For our masteries, we go 18 Cunning and 12 Resolve, grabbing Storm Raider's Surge as our Keystone Mastery. Now in this video, you will notice I'm using Thunderlord's Decree. I was kind of just testing it out to see if I liked it more, but I definitely prefer the Storm Raider's Surge. The reason it's so great is it helps Vladimir stay in fights. The first thing to note is it's extremely easy for Vladimir to do 30% of a target's health in 2.5 seconds. This means he will be able to proc the mastery, which is an issue for other champions. It's then a great mastery because Vladimir doesn't have any CC or gap closer in his kit. This mastery will let you stay in fights and make you do a lot more damage in the long run. So these are the runes we take on Vladimir, and there's a couple things to note. First, we take the scaling health because, as I said before, he actually scales off of health. The next thing would be the six greater glyphs of scaling cooldown reduction. Because of how we have to itemize on specifically Vladimir being his AP and health scaling, we can't really get enough CDR in our build. This just helps us off by giving us an extra 10% cooldown reduction at level 18. The next runes that you don't take on a ton of mid laners would be the greater quintessences of movement speed. Similar to why we take Storm Raider Surge as our mastery, Vladimir has trouble staying in fights sometimes, and this just helps him move around the fights easier so he can stay and do damage. He also doesn't have anything to actually jump into the fight, so this helps you actually move into the fight. For our summoners, we take Flash and... Wait for it. Ghost. Why Ghost, you ask? Well, like I said before, Vlad has no CC or gap closer. I'm going to keep stressing that. He needs to move into fights and stay there, so he needs the movement speed. Now, we do get a proto belt in our build, which is like a tiny little dash, which helps a tiny bit, but not enough. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to take Ghost, you can take Ignite. I mean, sometimes I still take Ignite if I'm against Swain or Mundos or something but usually I will always take Ghost. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna look at his abilities, starting with his passive, which is called Crimson Pact. So really, really easy to understand. He gains bonus health from his AP and bonus AP from his health. This is actually really, really cool because you can technically get a Warmogs, which is, you know, the highest health item there is, and still gain a shitload of AP from it at the same time. Not much else to say, you know, just get AP, get health, and scale like a god. So next up is your main ability, it is your Q, and it's called Transfusion. This is basically just an ability with a 600 range that does magic damage and heals yourself, which are both based off your AP. The cooldown goes down every time you level it as well, so it's great to put points into. So the new part of the ability is called Crimson Rush, and this is what lets you do double damage and heal for a lot more as well. If you're doing it right, basically every other Q can technically do double damage. This is because the empowered Q counts towards the transfusion count for the next empowered Q. You pretty much want to be using this on the enemy champion as much as you can for a lot of harassment and sustain. If they're playing really far back, there's nothing wrong with using this to last hit minions and get your health up that way. Next is Vladimir's W, Sanguine Pool. 
This is your escape ability that gives you bonus movement speed and makes you untargetable for 2 seconds. The downside to this ability is the fact that it costs 20% of your current health. You don't want to use it when you have a lot of health because you're going to lose a lot of health. Now the first thing you have to note is you can still take dot damage like ignites and poisons while you are in this pool form. However, on the good side you can use items such as Hextech and your summoner spells when also in the pool. You pretty much just want to use this ability like you would a Fizz E to dodge incoming CCs or heavy damage. It's also great to use this ability to tower dive people. You don't take tower shots and you actually do a little bit of damage. You can then pop out of the pool, cue somebody, and run out of tower range grabbing a kill. Vladimir's last basic ability is his E, Tides of Blood. This is pretty much just an ability you kind of hold down and you let go of when you are near somebody to damage them. One issue is you will be slowed by 20% after you hold it down for one second. The ability will then automatically go off after a second and a half or if you are interrupted. This ability then shoots out and does a ton of damage which is also based off of your percent max health and slows for half a second. The slow on the ability itself isn't that big of a deal considering we get a Rylize in our build. Other than that, this is a great ability for chunking people. It can actually do like half of 80 carries health when you are in the late game. It's also great for pushing lanes really really quickly as it does a ton of AoE damage. The ability is not as strong as your Q, but it is our second max. Also, do not forget, at max cast, this does cost 10% of your health. Don't kill yourself. Last is the ultimate, Hemo Plague. A great AoE ultimate that procs after 4 seconds. It does a bunch of damage after those 4 seconds, but it also increases the damage champion takes for the 4 seconds before it procs. Vladimir is then healed per champion damaged by the detonation after it goes off, so of course you want to try to get it on as many people as you can. It's also best to use this ability early on in the fight so you can increase the damage on the champions and it will actually have a chance to proc. For our ability order, we of course take our ultimate, Hemo Plague, as often as we can, meaning 6, 11, and 16. First in priority for our basic abilities is our Q Transfusion. The cooldown goes down with each level and the sustain and damage is great on this ability. We follow it up with our E, which is yet another fantastic ability that does AoE damage. Now although we would like to reduce the cooldown on our W, we can't really do that. We at least make sure we get one early point in this ability at level 3, so we have a reliable escape. Our item build starts with a Doran Shield, Health Potion, and Warding Totem. Now as I previously mentioned, he does have a rather weak early game, so the Doran Shield will just kind of help you get over that hump. For our first buys, we then get a Hextech Proto Belt, Sork Shoes, and Rylai's Crystal Scepter. The Proto Belt is a great item on Vlad since you get the ability power, health, and cooldown reduction. Every single thing you need to scale on Vlad. It's even better since it has a short range dash you can activate, which can help you close gaps on targets. You can even use this when you are in your sanguine pool, so you can actually shoot offensive rockets when you're in a defensive form. Pretty damn cool, you guys should try it if you haven't yet. So next up is those Sork Shoes, they're a great item because you get magic penetration, which, you know, is great for getting through any early magic resistance. You may want to get the Ionian Boots if you are replacing anything in this build that does have cooldown reduction on it, you do want 40% in total. So that brings us to our next core item, the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. By far the best item on Vlad. Tons of ability power and health, but an even better passive. This passive gives you a 40% slow when you use an ability on an enemy champion for 1.5 seconds. Since Vlad does have a problem sticking on target sometimes, this is a great item to help with that problem. Next, we move into the Spirit Visage, which is one of the best defensive pickups on Vlad by far. 10 more cooldown reduction, bringing us to 30% with our runes, 500 health, a bunch of health regeneration, and 55 magic resist. You can move this up in your build if you are against a high AP team or if you are against a mid laner that can bully the shit out of you. It also increases the healing on yourself by 25%, making your new Q even better. By far one of the best items yet again, and I get it almost no matter what. Speaking of items you always have to get, the Void Staff. A bunch of AP and the ability to get through 35% of the enemy's magic resist. You're Vlad, everybody's going to be building magic resist at some point, so to negate that, you get a Void Staff. 
Our last item in our item build is yet another item pretty much every mid laner that is AP based in the game gets, the Zonia's Hourglass. Yet again, a bunch of ability power with some nice added armor. The better part, the ability to go immune every 120 seconds for two and a half seconds. This item is another item you may want to move up in your build order if you are against something like a Zed or Talon and you need that much needed armor. Now all of these alternatives are great items, but none of them have cooldown reduction. Well, besides the Warmogs. So before I even talk about them, you are going to want to trade your Sork Shoes for Ionian Boots so you remain at 40% cooldown reduction. So the first obvious choice that wasn't included in the full build would be, of course, the Death Cap. This is the single item that could make you do as much damage as possible, pretty much. In this case, I would only really get it really, really late. I would maybe get rid of the Proto Belt later on and then get the Death Cap instead of that item. Warmogs is an item you see every now and again on Vlad. In my opinion, though, it's kind of gimmicky. He gets so tanky from his build already, he gets health on pretty much every item, so you don't honestly need Warmogs. You know, it can be really funny running around with like 5k health and whatnot, but if you're taking the game seriously, I, I honestly don't get Warmogs too often. So a great item if you are against a really high AP team would be getting the Abyssal Scepter. Honestly, the only thing I would replace in the build with one would probably be yet again the Proto Belt. If you get this though against a high AP team, you're going to be doing a bit more damage because of the aura and you're going to be tankier. You're going to be really hard to bring down against a high AP team. And for super late game, you could get a Guardian Angel. Those situations where your single death could cost you the game, you know, you could replace an item with a Guardian Angel, because you're already max anyways, and then get rid of it if you died later on. So that pretty much covers it for our somewhat recently reworked Vladimir mid lane guide. He's a super strong champion, and there's a reason he's picked and banned in LCS over and over again. He's a great champion to get into your champion pool, so kudos on you guys for watching a Vlad guide. If you guys did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, and of course you can find us on our website, egamingtv.com. Our site has been recently reworked, it's actually looking pretty cool, so if you are looking for other champion guides, go and check that out. You can also get in contact with us on our Twitter, at egaming underscore TV. Now we also do all of our skin giveaways at the end of every month on our Twitter, so if you're interested in the opportunity to win free skins, make sure you follow us on Twitter. So I'd just like to thank you guys for watching, and of course if you guys have any comments or suggestions, please leave those below. Peace.